Yeah, Professor, uh, request Professor Kaneya Pandey to chair this session. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Makan. So welcome to Professor uh, Jai An, and uh, welcome to all of you for today's first talk and third overall of this webinar. Uh, professor Jai An is a professor at uh, Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. He has been working on the Rydberg atoms for quite some time. In fact, he had his PhD thesis was on Rydberg atom data register. So overall, he has been working on the Rydberg atom from last 20 years. And he's having a lot of uh, good and nice results with Rydberg atoms. So let us hear from him. Uh, welcome, Professor Jai Kwan. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pandeli, for the introduction, and also thank all the organizers for having me here. So I guess this uh, workshop is for the quantum uh, simulation and computation for the cold atoms, right? So today's talk will be about the read book atom uh, applications in this quantum simulation and quantum computation. As a matter of fact, we are uh, working both of the directions of quantum simulation and computation. So let me briefly explain that uh, in, a, in, a, in a minute, okay? So our, our system is as shown here, so each red sphere represents single atom, which are uh, closely uh, placed in space in vacuum, so that uh, they can strongly interact with each other through readable blockade, and in an approximation which uh, allows only the nearest neighbors are strongly interact, and next near neighbors are not interact with each other, then is Hamiltonian looks like this. So uh, this global Hamiltonian can be used uh, for some kind of uh, computational usage, usage, like a ground state binding of this many body yeah. system, so which we may call that as a quantum simulation. And also in other direction, we can, also, we can uh, use light to individually access each atom uh, as a sequence of time or pulses, then it's a local Hamiltonian. Local Hamiltonian of particular atoms are being interacted with light and with their neighboring atoms can be used as a, uh, a means to process digital quantum circuit operations. So in this case, local Hamiltonian is used for quantum computation and global Hamiltonian is used for quantum simulation. Okay, let me, let me come back to this one uh, in a minute. Uh, before I start, okay. Huh? Next slide. How can I go to next slide? Interesting. <laughs> I'm sorry for the technical uh, problem. So, but uh, how can I go to next slide? Let me stop this one. Huh? Okay, okay. So this is, we are at KAIST. KAIST is a, a, a research institute specialized in science and technology uh, located in the middle of South Korea uh, uh, in the city called Daejeon. And uh, uh, for this whole talk, I have to briefly ex uh, explain uh, the concepts of Rydberg atoms and quantum simulations and quantum computation, because probably this audience may not need a, a long uh, introduction, but uh, for the completeness, I will, I will briefly explain. Quantum simulation is a special kind of quantum computation uh, uh, used, for, used to solve certain problems, including some important physics problems. And, and this is the first type of Firstly, proposed quantum computing methodologies uh, pioneered by uh, Mamin and Feynman. And examples are quantum annealing, quantum adiabatic computation, and it can be used to find the ground states of many body systems, uh, which I will uh, explain in our experiments. And which this type of computation, this type of quantum computation, 
uh, requires many qubits, but less requires gate dilatities. So it may be quite suitable for neutral atom systems. But this type of system may not be a universal computation. Okay. And also the quantum computation uh, people generally uh, nowadays use is a digital based gate based quantum computation, which is universal. So this is a universal computation and which requires gates and circuits and, and many uh, global companies like IBM, Google, or IonQ um, and many others are uh, pursuing this uh, direction and, and developed quite significantly la uh, during last few years. Uh, this type of computational method requires extremely high fidelities uh, going to make a logical qubits having uh, the error corrections, but uh, at the same time it requires less number of uh, um, num uh, qubits from something around 50 to 100. Uh, read book atoms are the uh, atoms in a highly excited state as you all were aware. And uh, it, it takes advantages of atomic precision, something on the kilohertz energy levels, and, and, and each individual ones are uh, all identical, perfectly satisfying the quantum nature, and also it's very accurate and very stable in time and energy, and also it's very easy to scalable. Also, it has a mesoscopic scale, something under the micrometer. So, which gives us a great advantage of individual controls, at the same time, some programmabilities, okay? And they interact very strongly because readable atoms are so big, their wave function can be overlapped at a distance of micrometer scale. So it can offer us fast and high fidelity operations, okay? Uh, Probably this is not uh, enough introduction, but let me go with that. So with that, uh, this is our system. Some <clears throat> atoms are arranged in, in vacuum chamber with a uh, spacing of something on the order of five micrometer with each other. So when, uh, wait a second, let me have a, a annotation. So this atom is separated by other atom five micrometer. If they are separated by five micrometer each, we can see individual atoms with using our regular microscope objectives, right? So each one, this red sphere or blue spheres are single atoms. So <coughs> in our usage, particularly lately, what we use is some of the atoms we use as wire atoms and the other atoms we use as data atoms. So, which means uh, in order to process information of the data atom, which are red spheres, we use blue atoms as wire atoms, uh, sort of uh, artificial wire, which means this graph, the, the graphs are like a vortexes and edges, right? So this edge, the readable block K is through interaction and vortices are each atom, right? And <coughs> particular arrangement of atoms will give us particular graph in mathematics, right? And, and using that mathematics, we can define Hamiltonian with, with uh, laser Rabi oscillation of each atom and laser detuning, which also gives us a, 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 a spin interaction along other direction uh, and also pairwise interaction. But in this case, uh, this, uh, these pairs uh, belong to the edge of, of a graph. So each graph is defined by vertices and edges. And, and this arrangement will give us a, a distinct vertex and edge set. So which means uh, it, it, this arrangement will give us a, a graph as an approximate, in approximation of ignoring the next nearest neighbor interactions, right? But, but if you use this blue atom as a wire to, to use a, a kind of virtual uh, connections, then this graph can be deformed or, or uh, can be used for this type other kinds of graphs. So this, this graph on the right-hand side, for example, which is uh, difficult to implement 
in, in, in certain reason, then we can use this left hand side all uh, arrangement for that. Okay, so uh, met, uh, solution can be uh, identical. By solving this on the left, what we actually use will be give us the same answer for the right hand side on certain problems and on certain conditions. So we take advantage of that. This type of usage of atoms are called quantum wires. Quantum wires. Uh, some people, pioneers like Zola, they, they and their groups, they they, they define with a quantum uh, Ising wires, but uh, more generally, those are quantum wires. And in our particular type of uh, usage, we may call this readable quantum wires. And first example is the uh, analog uh, the ground state binding of this graph uh, Hamiltonian. This is a quantum Ising Hamiltonian. And uh, in the final state, we'll go to the classical Ising Hamiltonian. Uh, what, why it doesn't go to the next slide? Uh, okay, interesting. Uh, I'm all having trouble going to the end. In a certain Hamiltonian condition, for example, u equals bigger than delta, which is detuning. So interaction, pairwise interaction is bigger than the detuning and which are positive. And it's ground state of this uh, graph uh, arrangement of atoms, I think quantum Ising spins ground state is this. For example, this, 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 this black means ground, uh, ground state. Uh, this, this black means excited state and red means ground state. So if you start from a uh, 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 atom with all of them are in the ground state, and, and if you make, if you find the ground state of this Hamiltonian, then we end up having this type of arrangement of ground states, which are red and the uh, excited state, uh, uh, excited state, which are uh, black here. So those are the uh, uh, ground state of this Hamiltonian. We'll go back to that. And that will be mapped to a certain uh, mathematical problem called as maximum independent set, okay? Maximum independent set. So that is the first part of the third uh, uh, talk. And the, uh, in the second part, in the, in the end, uh, in the second part, we'll more discuss on the uh, addressing type of uh, quantum gate applications. So in this case, for example, if you have three wires and then if you use one wire as a quantum wire in a sense, then it can be used uh, uh, in a different sense. It, it's an ancilla or auxiliary uh, qubit. So, to process X and G, X and G data qubit, we use Y, Y qubit. And, and for example, if X and G are not coupled by wire, so for example, X, uh, these are, if they are directly coupled by this readable blockade, and then they, this X and G cannot be simultaneously excited to the readable state, which means a logical bit uh, uh, representation, this X and G states cannot be uh, one one. So, but general computation requires all computational basis, like uh, for example, two qubits, then you need a zero, 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 one, and one, zero, and one, one. But this one, one, which are called anti blockade state, are not uh, allowed in this Hamiltonian. To avoid that, we use this Y, which is a wire atom, and to be always zero in the in the beginning, and that is used during the computation, and then we'll come back to the uh, final states. Then we can process, we can we can do the computation of this x and g two qubit using the uh, wire information. Okay, only by uh, single atom addressing of x g and uh, x y and g. Okay, so uh, uh, this talk. This, this work that I will present today are done by many of the, our students. For example, uh, Yunung Song and Minya Kim and Hyosup Kim. In particular, what we, I will discuss is the, uh, the Kang Eun Kim's quantum wire experiment and the uh, Minya Kim's 3D array experiment and uh, uh, the platonic solid and carry tree experiments, simula quantum simulation done by Yunung Song and uh, uh, Hyun Woo Jung. And the money is from the Samsung uh, Science and Technology Foundation. Uh, <clears throat> many of the work we are able to do uh, is uh, to produce certain types of, of zero entropy atom array. So 
if you want to have a certain type of uh, atoms, we want them to be at a certain places uh, with a perfectly deterministically, right? But uh, <clears throat> if you uh, each atom is now uh, captured by optical tweezer, so in this like a nine by nine uh, uh, optical lattice, there are like a, we we use like AD one optical tweezers turn on uh, uh, in a chamber of cold atoms, then uh, and these optical tweezers capture single atom with a very high probability, but uh, only half of them are filled. So it means like either this is capturing one atom or not, You're capturing one atom or not. The physics behind it is called a uh, collision of blockade. Uh, and because of that, uh, if you only use optical tweezers to turn on to capture atoms, we'll end up having this about 50% of field uh, random arrays. But that was a problem, but we now have a way to actually uh, uh, move these optical tweezers either simultaneously or one by one very fast. And we can now make a zero entropy atom arrays by designing which atom will go to which. So having uh, starting from an optical tweezer array, we'll, we'll identify which optical tweezer captures atoms and then uh, think of a uh, rearrangement pass and then make a, a smaller size array of atoms, okay? So this way we can make uh, also like many different kinds of arrangement, okay? This work was pioneered by many people and lately like a Broway and looking uh, uh, made it to a very large scale, something on the order of like a few hundreds. So this is a brief uh, like a summary of latest uh, development. Of course, I, I'm, uh, this is, uh, it could be my fault if I miss many of the uh, other people's groups, but uh, as you can see, the number of qubits, number of atoms we take, we can use for quantum simulations mostly uh, reaches something beyond the 250 atoms now. And, 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 the, and many different kinds of uh, graph arrangements like the 3D arrangements and non-planar arrangements, fractal uh, graphs, and, and the, the, some of the works that I will discuss today is uh, this red dots here. Like this. They, they, they can also produce like a 25 atom GHG state or XY Hamiltonian or SSH Hamiltonian, uh, something like this. And then one of the latest achievements is the quantum spin liquid phase they, they absorbed. So using this uh, basic uh, principle or method, we can make a 3D atom arrays. For example, you know, they can make this, this type of artificial uh, art artistic, you know, artistic arrangement of Eiffel Tower, for example, in the Broix group. I believe the, the uh, theory will come here in, the, in this session in the, later on. So let me briefly uh, show you what are the experiments that are. Okay. Uh, I see some, okay. Okay, so our system, uh, our system, Wilberg atom system, uh, there are two systems, Alice and Eve, and, and both are uh, combinations of these experiment tools. So for example, we, we need uh, optical tweezers, as many as possible, but this number is limited by the laser power, which means uh, we can increase it more. You know, we can increase more with a, a, a more strong laser, uh, which are fine position controlled, and, and to, to capture up to half of this number, so like up to 125, so 250 divided by two is 125, right? 125 uh, atoms. And then also we need, we have a laser cooling and uh, trapping apparatus, magnet optical trap, which can, we, we can cool the atoms, or we use rubidium starting from room temperature to 25 microkelvin and a certain for the processor like a EIT cooling, we, we end up having the one micrometer Kelvin uh, range. Also, we need a high resolution microscope. So numeric aperture is something like a 0 0.5 can uh, observe single atoms. So we can do the single atom image very efficiently. And also we need a high performance digital computer to, 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 to analyze our uh, data. And also we need a very, uh, 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 high-end lasers and control electronics. Okay. Okay. 
So for example, let me first start uh, with uh, discussing some few atom dynamics. For example, uh, let's say we, 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 we uh, try to probe four atom system, like this type of graph, which is called star, this type of graph, which is called complete graph, and this type of graph, which is cyclic graph, and this type of graph is called diamond, right? So, so we can we can uh, we can not con we can prepare each and in between uh, graph deep, um, formations. It, it, so you can make each of these graphs, and also we can deform this graph to from here to here by pulling it out in the, the one number one atom to to have a complete graph like this, or we can twist to to change from complete graph to cyclic graph, uh, likewise. Okay. Also, you can arrange atoms in a slightly uh, deformed two-dimensional uh, planes so that we can make this type of arrangement. I'm sorry, in the item annotation. Now, this type of uh, graph which is called Cayley tree with three shells, which has 10 atoms, or this type of graphs, which is a double core Cayley tree, uh, which has 14 atoms, or, or uh, three shell three shell Kelly tree, which is 22 atoms, like for example, this type of Kelly we can make. So let's, let me, let us probe what they are doing, you know, uh, experiments. Oops. So this is a crunch dynamics, which means we, we turn on that global Hamiltonian and turn off and see their ground state, okay? So, and this is the probability of ground states. So like each, all of them are in the ground state. The probability changes as a function of time of this quenching. So as a function of time, because the time of this Hamiltonian to be on is diff different, changing. So their ground state probability, which the ground, uh, the, not the ground state, but the zero, 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 zero state, the all, their all ground state, all ground state probability uh, changes in time. This time domain measurement signal can be further transformed to get a uh, energy spectra and this energy spectra corresponds to the energy differences of this many body system. So let me go come back to that in a, in a minute. So, uh, so this graph, we measure this way. I'm um, sorry, we need annotation. Okay. So this graph, we measure that way. And this graph, we measure that way. This graph, we measure this way. And this graph, we measure this way. And if you overlap them with this spectrum here, and these are the energy level changes, energy levels, those are the energy levels uh, as a function of deformation parameters. For example, this, this, this here is a, a star graph. This here is a, a complete graph. This here is a, a cyclic graph and complete graph like that. And if you compare that with a, a numerical simulation, because this is only four atom system, we can easily simulate that. And they're uh, they're they're quite they're similar. Now let us look at the, how their energies and eigenstates are, uh, can be you know, summarized, right? For example, this star graph, this this star graph is this, this star graph has four energy uh, eigen energies. For example, out of because these are four atoms, there there will be eight eigenstates and eigenenergies. However, because we start from 0, 0, 0, 0, all in the ground states. So some of them are uh, accessible from the ground state. We may call this bright state. And some of them are not accessible from the, the initial state, which uh, we call dark state. If you exclude dark states, there are only four states for the S star, and two states for the complete graph, and three states for the cyclic graph, and diamond graph has a four states. So what the, the previous spectrums are uh, energy differences. That's why, for example, if you are three energy states, then the, there are differences only there are also three. So there, that's why we measure three energy uh, uh, levels. Okay. Like this, for example. Uh, so, so there are this one, for example, is a three. One, two, three. Oh, sorry, uh, annotation. So, so one, two, three. Okay, this is three. So, but, uh, likewise, they are also one, two, three, like this way. 
so we can uh, we can uh, uh, we we can confirm that uh, we our quantum systems two atom quantum systems are doing the proper dynamics as we expected. Okay. So also we can do a little bit of a different kinds of experiment. Let's say we use six atoms, six six atoms, and then, and then let's see uh, three of the atoms form a triangular interaction, and three of them are also triangle interaction. If these two triangle, one triangle and, and the inverted triangle are on the same plane, they form this type of graph, quite well uh, uh, connecting with each other. But if these two triangles are far away, by having these two planes, having each triangle will be separated far away, then they are uh, sort of like a you know, non-interacting triangular three atom system, right? So by changing in between, starting from here to here in the same plane and the separate plane, their, their energy levels are shifting. Their, their energy structures are uh, different, right? And uh, we were not able to measure all individual in, in between, but uh, we measured here and here and here. And their interactions are like a three atom, a six atom of this type of graph will have uh, three energy levels differences. And then this one in between will have a more complicated that if they're well separated and these are these are isolated two trio atom systems and the expression is simpler. So we, we, we were able to see this type of uh, atom cluster cluster interaction by using this method. So now, uh, uh, now so far we have uh, discussed something about this the uh, crunchy dynamics. Now, now it, they, they go to the quantum simulation. The particular quantum simulation method we are using is quantum annealing, which is pioneered by the Japanese group in Nishimori group. And they were proposing the transverse Ising models quantum simulation in terms of quantum annealing which can be, uh, uh, our method is very similar, not exact, but very similar. So for example, this Hamiltonian, which is, uh, uh, in the, which is a Hamiltonian for parametric, uh, uh, paramagnetic uh, spins, right? So if the, each uh, blob here, each blob here means the ground state atom, ground state atom. And all of them are in the ground state. We may call the spin down, right? Spin down, uh, arranged spins, those are paramagnetic, right? So it, our initial state is very easy to prepare. And we want to use this mass, we want to, we want to change this Hamiltonian in time slowly enough to a certain final Hamiltonian we want to have. For example, this Hamiltonian here, this Hamiltonian here is final Hamiltonian which is the uh, Hamiltonian for the anti-ferromagnetic uh, spins, right? So if you, if you change the uh, slowly enough, adiabatically uh, from this Hamiltonian to hit this Hamiltonian using a certain kinds of uh, control parameter path, then uh, this system can be left in the ground state of this total Hamiltonian. So we'll starting from an easy configuration of easy Hamiltonian, we'll go to a final Hamiltonian so that we can achieve, we can find, or we can solve the ground state of this more complicated Hamiltonian. This is kind of a scenario that we, we use. And, and it, uh, in, the, in between there is a quantum critical point. So that's why here, many of the states are mixing with each other. So it performs certain type of quantum computation, but requires uh, slow enough adiabatic, adiabatic, yeah. So in this level, we will be very close with each other. So uh, in terms of adiabaticity, it will slow, very slow. But so far, we haven't, uh, so far our experiments are heuristic in a sense. So nearly adiabatic. However, uh, we, uh, in our few examples of experiment, we were able to uh, uh, get the final probability of this final ground state uh, very high with, with a very high probability. That's why we are able to get the answer. Uh, the, the, it's not, it cannot be mathematically proven, but heuristically we can find, we can uh, consider this is the ground state we are able to find using the quantum annealing. Okay. So using this method, let's probe 
how we get the uh, ground state of this Cayley tree icing spin. Okay, so the atoms are arranged to make the graph for these Cayley trees, like a G10, 10 atoms, G22, and G14. G G10 and G14 may be called as a regular Cayley trees, and G14 is dual spin, dual core Cayley trees. Uh, this, this type of Cayley trees, uh, the one particular feature of Cayley tree is uh, the the this balance atom on the outermost uh, uh, shell will have a more atoms than in the core. So we, there are six uh, these green atoms in the second shell, right? Then, but the core, which includes core and the first shell, will only have four. That's why uh, if you use this Hamiltonian, uh, this final shell will determine what's the spin. So this final shell will have like a down spin, then the next shell will have an up spin, and center one will have a down spin again. So it's a shell by shell alter alternating spins. So it's an anti-paramagnetic, but shell by shell. This one also same as this one. So it also has shell by shell. But uh, in two dimensional arrangement of this uh, spins, if you make a this uh, G22 Kelly tree, then these uh, atoms will be so close with each other because it will have a, like a hexagonal, right? That's why we have to twist these last branches in such a way that uh, they will not be yes or no. <laughs> However, uh, this, uh, uh, this solution of these uh, regular Kelly trees are uh, easy to uh, understand. Uh, and so that we can you can check it with the experiment. But G14 will have a sort of frustration because this last shell will have a down spin, then the second, uh, the first shell will have a, a up spin. But the down the core because there are two atoms in the core, they will they cannot be in the uh, both ground states. So they'll have a certain frustration. So that's why their ground states are superposition state, like bell state or something like this. Superposition state. That's why. It, we expect a more interesting result out of it. So let's see the experimental data. <clears throat> so this is experimental data. So after having our Hamiltonian slowly turned from paramagnetic Hamiltonian to anti-paramagnetic Hamiltonian, and then we measure the ground state. Uh, we measure the atom uh, atom states, many atom states. Then uh, certain probability and it is x this x axis represents the micro binary representation which means that we can you can number each atom with this number and then uh, it's a binary so this peak means like uh, the core is down spin the first shell is a down spin second shell is up spin uh, for example this one this is the biggest uh, maximum probability which uh, must be uh, the ground state if our quantum annealing was successful is high, high probability so it's a Core is up spin, first shell is down spin, second shell is up spin, which means like oh they are uh, agreeing with our expectations, shell by shell anti magnetic. So this is G10, and G22 on the other hand is G22. This max population state is down spin, up spin, down spin, up spin, shell by shell alternating anti state. And this configuration is like, for example, I think this one is it. This one is it. So, okay. So, this uh, unmeasured spots are like a, a Rydberg states, and the bright spots are uh, the ground state. And this is so the Rydberg ground, Rydberg ground. Okay. So, which means like a up, down, down, up spins, right? Uh, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, okay. up, down, up, down, right? Shell by shell. G14, on the other hand, is a more complicated. So then we have almost same two configuration and their differences are only the core is either down up or up down. So these two configurations, the only cores are different. They are down up or up down, ground readable or readable ground. So they we have to measure this one because their ground state is proposition of these two. Our only we are able to measure binary states. So those are not the eigenstate of the final Hamiltonian, uh, but uh, we, we know these are the due to symmetry, they, they form a uh, position of these two. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so uh, this Hamiltonian for this graph will have a base uh, diagram, for example, uh, uh, okay. So for example, this one has a paramagnetic down base, paramagnetic up base, and in between there is a anti-paramagnetic shell by shell anti-paramagnetic base. G14, on the other hand, there are a um, little bit more complicated base diagrams. This one is a superposition state, frustrated. Uh, this one is a center is down, down. So this, this center, anti-paramagnetic base is split into a more complicated base. Uh, and and by, by changing the distance, which means like a, by changing the blockade interaction strengths, uh, we can change either this, Phase diagram of phase diagram. This 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, they are equal to something like a point. I think this is point, which is 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Ah, okay. uh, no, no, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So these two, in these two, uh, we'll have a uh, uh, this one. This particular one is a maximum population state, but in this phase, uh, the ground state changes. So then this one becomes a this one. This configuration becomes a uh, uh, ground state. The other states are first excited state and second excited state. Okay, so we were able to uh, understand uh, this one was uh, as expected. Also, we can see that uh, uh, during the evolutions of, of quantum modeling, we were able to actually probe what are the specific micro spin configurations. And and on, on the right on the right hand side, what on the right hand side shows is uh, they. Their, their Niels order, anti order, if you define it shell by shell, they will develop. They'll develop as time goes on. Okay, as time goes on as expected. So uh, we have to do that kinds of quantum simulation. Now uh, let, let's move on more to uh, use this quantum annealing to solve certain problems. Okay. So particular problem that we are dealing with is a maximum independence set problem. And as I explained before, and this one has a, uh, particularly we use a quantum wires, this, this, uh, this blue spheres to change one graph to another, okay? So, uh, so let us introduce the maximum independence set problem. This is a well-known mathematical problem in combinatorial mathematics, which is known to be notoriously different for classical computers when the number of vertices increases to a large number. Okay, so this is a typical problem which many people think to consider uh, to to demonstrate the advantages of quantum computers. Uh, compared to the digital computers, because this type of problem is very difficult for classic computers, but it may be, used, it may be easy for class uh, kernel computers. Uh, this maximum independent set problem is finding the maximum size of independent set of a given graph. For example, this very small graph, which is called like a three pan, I think this is called. And this, this, this five atom graph, this five vertex graph, there are five independent sets. This independent set means this, this red dot are not supposed to be connected directly, okay? And the maximum number of atoms in an independent set will be, should be two, because this case, this one has a red, two reds, also they're all two reds. That's why maximum independent set length is two, and there are five max independent sets, maximum independent sets, okay? So, so this problem is to find what are the maximum independent set lengths and what are the this maximum independent set, this five? Okay, that is a problem. So this is very easy to find. You can easily by looking at the, you know, by staring at this graph, we can easily find the lengths and the set very easily. But if the number of vertices increase to a very large number, it's very difficult to uh, find this solution. That's why this is called NP complete problem non deterministic polynomial problem. It, uh, it requires exponentially. Uh, I'm not an expert in this type of uh, mathematics, so, but uh, it's, this is NP-hard or NP-complete problem. And it has a no efficient classical algorithm. But parallel algorithms, parallel processing, like a quantum computing, may be, advan may be of advantage to, to find this one. So 
you will you will find it much much faster. But in readable atoms, this MIS problem is naturally mapped to Hamiltonian. So our previous uh, example was this atom arrangement and their uh, excitation to Rydberg atoms in the Rydberg blockade range will give us the Hamiltonian and the graph uh, structure for this maximum independent set problem. So in Rydberg atom system, in our previous uh, 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 explanation, MIS is just the counting Rydberg atoms in the final state after quantum annealing. And this was first proposed by this Harvard group. Uh, okay. And but issue is uh, not many graphs cannot be you know, prepared in two or three D arrangement. Okay. Uh, because some of the graphs cannot be you know, produced in this uh, limited dimension of space. That's why uh, it requires wiring, certain different, kind, different kinds of wiring, quantum wires. That's why uh, Jolo and other people, they proposed uh, the analyze the quantum wires. Okay. So with that, uh, for example, this is uh, our experiment in a certain, so now we have about 250 optical tweezers that, that which means we can capture at a single event, we can capture about half of them, so like 125. So this is an experiment. We captured 126 atom. So this red represents ground state. And then after performing the quantum annealing, we were able to find that uh, these are the Rydberg states. This red represents Rydberg atoms, okay? Which means uh, we were able to experimentally uh, solve, solve, uh, attempt it, to find the maximum independent set solution of this 125 uh, vertex graph, okay? However, if you look very carefully, this answer in the below is, uh, is not exactly correct. For example, if you consider this red dot here, supposed to be, uh, this blue supposed to be red because this is, this is not connected to any other red. So that's why this solution Experiment solution is not exactly correct because of the experimental errors, because our experiment has certain beta flip errors, like uh, called you know, beta flip errors. So certain Rydberg states are measured with a probability of something like five percent, uh, about uh, five to ten percent to be ground state, and some of the atoms in the ground state are measured to be uh, in Rydberg state with a probability of something like five percent. So those those beta flip errors. Uh, basically uh, gives us the wrong answer. So we need certain statistical study only. But however, uh, this, this large size graph in our experimental level now, uh, we cannot make a zero entropy arrangement, which means like we are not that easily reproduce these type of large graphs. We are only able to reproduce something uh, up to 40 atoms graphs. That's, graph. That's why, However, we can uh, perform this experiment many, many, many different times. How many times uh, we, 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 we did, we performed like, a, we performed something mm -hmm. like a, uh, 11, mil, uh, one, uh, 1 million times, about 1 million times events. And this is a kind of the summary of this whole experiment. Uh, X axis represents atom number. So, uh, and we are counting only connected atoms, connected atoms on the X, uh, number of atoms in, in a connected graph. And Y axis is the error, uh, which means like difference between our experimental solution and theoretical solution up to 120 atom vertex, vertex graphs, we, we, our classical computer can, can easily get the solution. Okay, we are not, uh, we are not near to a classical computer limit. Okay, so this error on the right hand side, left hand side means the difference between error, uh, experimental solution and the theoretical solution, right? Uh, but, and also we, we uh, because the spam errors are basically shifting this uh, difference, that's why uh, using our model of spam error, best spam errors 
to to match it, this this zero center. Okay, these are the basically because our our calibrations of expen, uh, spam errors are not as best as we we just set this set uh, the the average to be zero because this is a, this more more like accurate way of uh, uh, setting our uh, spam errors, bit prep errors. So this is a basic shifting is uh, this uh, zero. Then these all solutions are scattered all around here. Okay, uh, for a particular graph, there are many different kinds of graphs. For a particular number of uh, atoms, there are different many different kinds of graphs. For example, that's why uh, and this this color represents the events of of of, of particular so repeated events. Okay, for some same graphs are repeated many many times. Okay, so the smaller graphs. Uh, uh, this repeat, repeated experiments or uh, high number of repetitions are performed, but in a large size graph, we, we only have a very limited number of uh, same experiments. That's why this statistically unstable here, but up to something around here, this is very, very good. But one thing we notice is it does not expand. It goes so like, you know, saturates right here. So it's here. So let's do some analysis of this one. <clears throat> so this the uh, this is the graph experiment thing, and then and and this is the projection of this one, so that we can see that how they are distributed. X axis is the mean error, and Y axis is the standard deviation, okay, standard deviation, and and Z axis is the number of uh, measurement in low scale. So in a very small uh, standard deviation area, there are a lot of uh, of measurement. And there are high standard deviation range. There are small number of measurements here. Okay? And if you if you project it to to uh, get the difference between the mean error versus low scale, which we can get the mean error per measurement statistics, which means they are centered very well. They're centered very well. And then this is uh, this is a very narrow distribution here. Also, if you cut this one so that we can see the behavior or of this uh, statistics. As a, as a function of low scale of measurement and standard deviation, we will see this type of shape. And, and this, this dot, this, this, these are the small, small size graph and many repeated measurement. And these are, and if you follow this line, this is kind of the, our uh, uh, understanding. If you follow this line, number of atoms increase, but the measurement we have performed is decreased. Okay, there's a statistical balloonable here. So this is statistically good, statistically balloonable. Which means this our standard deviation, if you average it over different kinds of graphs, is behavior in terms of atom number is square root, okay, square root, which is makes sense. But with this area here, uh, we, we don't have that much statistics, but still we may say that clearly this is less than square root less than square root, which means if you average it over like a n measurement, then we can get the difference between our experimental solution and the theoretical solution to be polynomial, okay? So uh, although this is average sense, okay? Average sense of uh, MISL, maximum independent set length, can be counted on average sense for average out for all possible graphs. Uh, this this uh, our MIS uh, experiment is not po is is polynomial, okay? not exponential time required. Okay, which means. But uh, please keep this in mind that uh, our our uh, under, under, uh, argument is only uh, only the when the graphs are all averaged. Okay, because we can we don't have any way to. Uh, compare each particular graph solution, okay? So let me uh, now turn on our attention to uh, non-planar graphs and quantum wires. As I explained before, not many graphs, many graphs cannot be made uh, in, in, in planar, in plane or even three-dimensional arrangement. That's why we need the quantum wires, okay? And there are uh, theorem. Uh, there are uh, there are theory uh, called like a. Uh, we can make two different kinds of 
graphs, which we'll explain later, we can make all different kinds of uh, non-planar graphs. These, are, these, these two are called typical, well-known non-planar graphs. Uh, uh, and we, we'll explain it later in a, in a second. The, the way of thing is this, for example, our target graph is, is this, target graph is this, yeah? And if you use a wire, this red does the right wires, right? red as using as wire, then this initial graph and quantum wire graph, we can do the experiment. And if you compare these graphs, MI as a solution with uh, the MI solution of the initial graph, then we can predict uh, target graphs MI solution, which means like uh, if this GT target graph is non-planar, and if you have a way to use quantum wires to produce same kind of connections, connected graphs from uh, initial graphs, if these two are uh, experimentally possible, then we can obtain the solution of this target graph. Okay, that's what that's the use of quantum wires. Okay, and and simple mathematics, which I will not you know, show here, but uh, it's in the paper, is uh, either this target graph MI solution is. Uh, initial and quantum wires MI solution or uh, MI solution minus frustrated solutions only, which means like uh, if the wires are connected and these wires are in our uh, uh, anti ferromagnetic phase, this are supposed to be uh, opposite, opposite, right? So, so this wire, for example, this wire has to be anti ferromagnetic chain. And frustration means like if these both are uh, up, up, or down, down, which uh, not satisfy these wires, right? That's why we, we after finding the MI solutions, maximum intimate set, uh, this is very clear which ones are frustrated. So we, we just exclude them. Then we can get the MI source of target graph. It's very, very easy. So, so to do that, let's see some uh, uh, initial experiment. <clears throat> We started at four o'clock, right? Uh, organizers, how long, what, how many time do I have? Yeah, you, you are having five more minutes. Pardon me? Yeah. Four minutes? Five minutes, five minutes. Five minutes, okay, okay. Okay. So we can do the experiment of initial graphs to find in the ground state and the, the, the MI solutions are these three, these three. And the target graph is this. We can also do the experiment. This one, this, this is MI solution, this two. And the uh, wired, quantum wired, uh, this uh, graph, uh, like this two. So, so which means like uh, this is the case of uh, this, uh, this, okay? The configurations are like this way, uh, excluding this wire configurations. So either this solution or that type of solution. This one, particularly, they are frustrated solution. For example, this is frustrated solution, okay? So if you, if you exclude that, then these two are the this one. So, and this this solution is actually the same as this solution here. So, either excluding uh, zero this one minus this set is this one. So mathematically, you can uh, get uh, many different kind of variations, but uh, uh, you can easily get the solution. Okay. So likewise, we can do the other kinds of thing, platonic solid. For example, this is three dimensional graphs. Uh, although we can make three dimensional graphs. Uh, sometimes it's, it's much, much easier to do the experiment if you have a way to project it to the two dimension, okay, plane. So uh, this is tetragonal, cube, octahedral, and then we can use either one, two wires as corner wires, eight wires, or it, then we can, you can project it to, to two dimension, okay. This solution is like the uh, four state superposition state, and this is two state superposition state, and this is three state superposition state, okay. And experimentally, you can do produce produce this way, you produce this way, and then and then the uh, uh, their solutions are I, no. Okay, their solutions are like uh, this way. So uh, this one, you know, you, you may think that uh, this this is not this uh, uh, on the left hand side are uh, uh, less uh, populated than this one. But keep this in mind, this is a single binary state, is the uh, state of the many-body state. However, this one is the, the this, these are, in the, these are the, each corresponds to this 
space. So, so total, this total is the ground state because the ground state is a superposition, all binary state. That's why uh, it has a less population state, but the, this ground state population we reach it is about 40% out of like uh, something like 500 events. This one, something like 12%. The reason is because there are so many atoms here and this uh, state is, uh, is, is very much static. Although we have done much, much more in experiment, the ground state is, it, it is distinguishable, but their state probably is a little low. This one is the experiment a little bit wrong because uh, this not only three state, but also uh, maybe because of the experimental errors, we deformed a little bit. So uh, not only these three states, but also some other states are excited. Anyway, uh, we were able to do uh, up to a certain level, we can do this experiment. Uh, now, let us consider non planar graph. These graphs, like for example, K5 and K3, cannot be made in three dimension. So that's why we have to use a wire, yeah? these two and five wired, or these wires. And their solutions are this way. So, which means, like, a, oh, using quantum wires, we can make non planar graphs. And if you have a, uh, if you scale it up, then you can make all kinds of graphs. I mean, the, up to a certain experimental uh, difficulty, okay? And they're, they're agreeing very well with our expectation. Not only that, if you use corner wires, we can make a certain vortex which has a very much connected. For example, in two dimension, if you make this type of graph, we end up having this type of graph, different graph because the, these two atoms are close, so close. Oops, okay. These atoms are so close, that's why we wanted to make this graph, but we end up having W6 graph, wheel graph. However, if you use these wires, we can make very easily uh, two dimension S6 graphs, or even more, we can make very easily. Okay. Uh, although I have very limited time, I'll very briefly explain the quantum gate. If you use wire atom, you can do digital quantum computation only with the uh, readable extensions. Because this W, the wire atom, will be left in a ground state only. It can perform for the computation of the data atoms on AB data atoms using the wire atom in between. Okay. So for example, to do that, we need some addressing process. And then in the perform this sequence of pulses. So make, for example, CNAT gate. Uh, intrinsically, each atom's addressing is inverted C2 NAT gate. That's why we need a composite of this inverted C2 NAT gate or addressed gate, addressed operations to make a C NAT gate. And also we can make certain kinds of um, bell state measurement, uh, GH state preparation using like uh, six uh, uh, operations. So let me... Uh, uh, Time is almost up, so I'm sorry for the, uh, I could not explain very detailed the last part, but uh, uh, thank you for listening. This is what I have today. Yeah, thank you, Professor Jai Khan. Uh, it was a very nice talk. Now we will open for the question. And uh, <clears throat> so there is a question where uh, uh, it, was, it is asked by Sweta, are quantum wires serving a purpose like ancillary qubit to achieve the final configuration we want? Absolutely, that's correct. Okay, so there is question from Arnab Sarkar. Uh, please uh, unmute yourself, Arnab, and ask question directly. What is the difference between vertices treated as quantum wires and vertices as bits? I mean, how to identify it? Uh, we, we uh, we use for example uh, if you uh, so this is the arrangement this red are data qubits data atoms and blue are wire atoms this blue are only there to couple uncoupled data atom so it can be not only square lattice but also triangle lattice all kinds of different lattice it can be done that way planar and also non-planar graphs, arrangements. Okay. So, uh, so these, uh, these uh, quantum wires, these are not similar uh, as the other uh, bits we are uh, taking? I'm sorry, I couldn't understand what you say. Would you repeat the question, please? So this, uh, uh, can you hear me? 
yes. hello ah so uh, these uh, these red uh, and this uh, blue uh, sphere so uh -huh. those are not the similar atoms like uh, which are trapped on the so they are same atoms one, ha they so one you are treating ha so one a uh, few of them you are treating as a uh, quantum wires and others are as beads right so yeah, yeah. so so how how they are different when you are preparing them they are same only uses is a difference okay okay they are they are same atoms but their uses is only different For example, if you have a red data atoms, then we uh, we use blue as data wire atoms to couple uh, any chosen data atoms. So they okay. they are same atoms basically. They uh -huh. are same. They are same identical. Uh, they are same rubidium atoms in our experiment. Thank you. Ancillary atoms basically. Yeah. Is there any other question? okay so I, i will ask one question that uh, see this two qubit operations mm -hmm. uh, so for up to what distance this two qubit operation can be done in your experiment is it nearest neighbor only or it can be done to next nearest neighbor also good question so for example uh, if you have these two qubit gates yes and these two qubit gates then we can have a you know se uh, sequential operations to have these two qubit gates that's a that's a standard uh, quantum quantum computation gate uh, uh, theory but we we have a different approach if you have a different wire here then then it can be done differently although because each wire has to be have to kept as uh, different a certain distance it may have a you know probably in this scheme probably it may have a, like a you know about three atoms so the total number of pulses will be about the same but we can consider this one is a uh, so is it, it can be different or same okay so i mean is there possibility that we for example we want to do the two qubit operation between the first one and then let's say seventh one we bring them together perform two qubit operation and then again place them to seventh that's position that's a good idea that's a very good idea but the time scale of our present uh, experiment is moving atom is much much slower than our optical switched pulses okay optical switched pulses are on the scale of micrometer but the moving atom is takes about millisecond time scale that's why in the future it may be possible but in in, in the present is not okay other rebook and ground state atoms trapped in the same optical twisted array uh yes they are same optical twisted arrays uh uh but we also use when you are performing this type of gate experiment we turn off the op all optical twisters so they are basically turned off and then before they like go away we have to finish the experiment although Uh, nowadays they are uh, our experiments and other groups of experiments together are the alkali metal atoms rubidium but the alkali earth they can maintain the trap in our case of addressing we also use a weak optical tweezers to detune some of the atoms so that only the chosen atoms to be you know optically excited okay that's why uh, the the answer you, to your question is yes they are same optical tweezers they are trapped as same optical tweezers they are also they are use different kinds of optical tweezers to address to to detune chosen set of uh, atoms so we use two two different kinds of optical tweezers uh, tweezer arrays yeah <clears throat> yeah the, there is another question through the ripple okay which looks very similar to spin yes uh, this is a uh, spin glass uh, uh, implementation on 2d and 3d okay but uh, if you if you want to like arbitrary spin glass configuration we need the quantum wires okay 
is it yeah it so in your experiment you are uh, so for example for monitoring all these atoms for the detection phase you are signing 780 nanometer laser so there will be the temperature will be reaching to like 40 60 micro kelvin so again you are cooling using uh, eit cooling or you are just uh, going ahead so uh, we we now have eit cooling successful in one chamber but the whole experiment Done here is done in a different chamber, which is something on the 20 micro Kelvin temperature. So, if you have a colder atoms, for example, in the, in the vibrational ground state is prepared for these all atoms, then the fidelity will increase a little bit further, but not that high. Something like a. You know. okay. So, uh, I, I, our, our system is not designed for high fidelities, but uh, uh, if you want to increase the fidelity, we have to go to the lower temperature, uh, zero vibrational states, uh, state of the many body states. Okay. okay. So I do not see any other question. So we would like to thank Professor An for a very, very nice talk here. Thank you and, <clears throat> And uh, uh, we will. I will see you. Uh, we will see you uh, at four o'clock for the next talk uh, uh, by Professor Wooster from ICR Bhopal. So okay. See you. Thank you. Thank you.